Welcome to Big Iron with Max Prasik. I've always been intrigued with harnessing power, just being able to tame something that is seemingly untamable. For me, the essence of handgun hunting is getting close, getting in that uncomfortable personal space. It's visceral and life-altering. Every breath and every move matters. An activity and lifestyle that is difficult to master and while not for everyone, is rewarding for the individual willing to accept the challenge. Welcome to Big Iron. We are here in the Eastern Cape of South Africa with Tali's African Safaris. We got the Cape Buffalo out of the way. We decided to take the easier route the next day with Impala. I'm trying to keep a straight face. Uh, definitely not easier. One thing I would recommend if you, you know, make the commitment to hunt with tallies is a really good pair of boots because you're going to be walking through some really, really harsh terrain and you're gonna be walking on boulders where you can twist an ankle, we all did. And I'm not trying to discourage people, but keep in mind this is going to be a challenge. This is not a gimme. No one's handing you anything here. For planes game, I chose a 454 Casul. It's a high pressure, high velocity round that's good for a little more range than a lot of the other revolver cartridges that we use for big game hunting. I chose a BFR by Magnum Research with a six and a half inch barrel, their Bisley grip frame. On top, I put a four power loophole scope, but I also brought with me an UltraDot 30 as an alternate, because for me, they're a little easier to acquire, even in low light conditions. This time of the year, it's a very good time to hunt Impala. The Impala males are busy rutting right now. So you hear males all over the place rutting and, and going after females. We started off the day and we spotted a nice male. He was by himself, so we decided we're going to go after him. That's him. Where the males, they come poo and pee, uh, and then dig out the butt, and another male come also comes here. Yeah. I think it's a territorial thing. Marking, marking, marking the, the spot, yes. You can see it was here this morning. There's some fresh ones. The male of every species, so similar in many ways. We saw us here. So we hunkered down behind this gnarled tree and I got into a shooting position, hoping we'd get the drop on an impala. Sure enough, Anale, our tracker, pushed the ram back towards us. That is too far. We'll walk down this bush line. Yes. There's another nice male that live here. See if we see him, if we don't. Well, I'll go to a different area because that's one spooky now. We then went to a different area where there's big groups of impala. We saw another nice male and uh, the wind was good, everything was perfect. And we decided we we're going to try and stalk this male. We got up into a riverbed and he was just on the bank, or not a riverbed, it's an old dry creek. And we snuck up there. If he can just move behind some stuff and we can get in this thing. And there was a 15-yard opening that we had to cross. We snuck up there. There was some nice brush between us. He was behind the brush, and I could barely see him, but he was busy feeding. We got to probably within 50 yards from him. If we move, because I'm a little bit. Yeah, I want him to, to feed or something. The wind's actually from the wrong direction, but there's not really much wind, so we're going to try to get closer. But the female saw us. They keep on looking at us. 
they feeding and then picking up the heads, but they're just looking at us enough that we can't move. They do a thing called the stare down. We call it the stare down this week because there's so many times where we've been moving and they just pick up the smallest of movement, especially when there's a group. That's what makes them tough if you stalk a group, 10 or 15 pairs of eyes looking at you. We were standing still on one foot for probably 45 minutes to an hour. So the best to do in a situation like that is to keep still as long as you can uh, from without, try to not cramp up your legs and uh, your, feet, your feet feel like they want to fall off. Inevitably, they catch you in the open when you're not ready for them and you're not in a comfortable position. You have to just stay still, stay calm in that position and let them start feeding again and that's, that's when you can move again. Somehow he spotted us and turned around and was uh, snorting at us and he took off. When we come back, we try and corner one of these horny Impala rams. Welcome back to Big Iron with me, Max Prasik, as we continue our South African handgun hunt for Plainsgate. We're deep in it as we chase the Impala rams up and down the mountains yet again. We decided to go after and try again. We spotted another male from up top of a mountain. Across some fields at the bottom. We went after him. On the top we saw him and I thought I knew where he was, but when we got to the bottom, the, the scenery changed a bit and you're not sure where he exactly was. So we snuck up there and I think I was about 50 yards to the left of where he was. He came out into the open and we were trying to sneak into a, <laughs> behind some bushes so we could put a stock on him, really put a stock on him. He somehow got wind of us and the staring commenced. Well, that was clearly blown because he, he was on to us and he took off. This pretty much commenced the entire day. Every time we get within 60, 70, 80 yards from this impala and then they see us. That makes it real challenging to close the distance from 80 to 40 or to 30 yards. They say, you're already looking at us. At one point, our guide just said, go put the stock on us. Let's reduce the amount of people that are coming up. And it was just me and the cameraman. Stop, stop, stop. Go. Right there, he's broadside. Hang on one second. Go figure, another timid ram. But our tracker has eyes on another just on top of the ridge ahead. And he's supposed to be between these two trees. I know one. Very close. Okay, 20 yards. All right. We snuck up the mountain. And eventually, I think we got to about 25, 30 yards from him. But we had to peek over the side to, to get a shot at him. As soon as I popped my head over the top, he got up and ran. So we couldn't get close to him. I don't know if they heard us because the soil we were walking on were quite gravelly, like a loose rock um, gravel. He 
jumped up and took off. And I'm like, okay, it's another, another blown stock. I don't know if he heard us or smelled us or something, but I just popped up and he was up already. Was he standing up already? Yeah. yeah. Well, he oh. just jumped up. Oh. So when you saw him, he jumped up? As I jumped, yeah, he jumped up. Oh, and then okay. he was like, oh, sorry, I'm out here now. I'm like trying to keep, keep pick him up. And then he was behind, behind shit. shit. So. It was, a, it was a good try. I almost let one fly, but then I wouldn't hear the end of it from Tolly tonight. <laughs> Unfortunately, it didn't work. That's how hunting goes, and sometimes you go home without an animal, but it's more important to make sure that you get a good shot in then to just throw a shot at them from 80 yards and you might hurt the animal or you might get away. We just struck out. These things are so alert and it's so tough. But had I had a rifle, I'm telling you, yeah, I know, that's, I'm making the case for rifle hunters. And while, yes, I, we would have met with a lot more success this entire week, especially on this Plains game hunt, the challenge is in the handgun. What we do is hard. When we return, we change pace and stalk an even more easily spooked animal, the springbok. Welcome back to Big Iron and our South African handgun hunt for planes game. We're at Tolly's African Safaris in the Eastern Cape and ready for our next challenge. We decided to try our hand at Springbuck. They live on these really wide open spaces and boy, they're hard to get close to. It turns out a lot of these animals, much like our whitetail in the United States, are rather skittish and they have senses that are, that are on high alert all the time. Springbuck is a very hard animal to hunt. They've got good eyesight, good um, smell and they're always up in the open. So I knew it's gonna be hard to get close to him, but I thought, let's give it a go and see what happens. Sounds easy on paper. Well, perhaps easy if you're, you know, have a rifle with a variable power scope on it. They have a distinct advantage over a handgun hunter in that they can take a shot at an animal that's not alert to the fact that you're putting a stock on them. We spent the greater part of a day chasing this one particular springbuck, and it was tough going. It was up and down mountains. It was getting close, getting busted by the animal, him running off, and then he was doing it all over again. It's perfect, the wind is in our favor. Yeah. And we can use this, all the trees to, to get close to them. Get close, and they're feeding towards us. Okay. Lucky for us, we spot a male by himself. It not normally works like that. They're normally in a herd. We try and stalk him a couple of times. He just kept on bumping us, bumping us. We actually got fairly close to one spring buck. We got a nice ambient position. We sat down. He was feeding away from us. I get him. and he came feeding us to, straight towards us again. We were caught in the open. I didn't get a rest. I was in a sitting position that I don't like. He did reason they're banging. Stop. Stop. We did get a shot on that particular spring bucket at one point, and I flubbed it. Uh. And I shot right under him. It was pretty much in the cards that I wasn't going to get this animal and flub that shot. But it happens, especially when you're hunting animals that are as weary as these are, such as life. He kind of f***ed us up, though. He came back this way. <laughs> I could have gotten behind something and couldn't gotten on something, you know? Shut the up. We, as handgun hunters, have to get closer. Let's try for this ridge here. And that's going to be our last cover. Now, there are specialty pistols where they can take those 200, 300-yard shots really easily, and some of my colleagues do, and, and they're really talented shooters. But the way I do things, I like red dots on handguns, and I like to get close. I like revolvers. They knew the light's going to catch us eventually, and we try and stoke him a couple of times, but we gave it our best. Um, it just didn't work out for us. I have to say this though, I don't know if you've ever had the pleasure of following one of these guides or PHs that are Afrikaner, it seems to me that they have this superhuman ability to 
walk for great distance at great speed without getting winded. Well, it goes doubly so for the trackers. In this particular case, the gentleman that we had who was tracking for us. Sampiwe. I knew him for probably 20 years now. He also grew up in this farm. He was a little boy on a farm. Wherever they want to go, they walk. If they want to go to his neighbor and, and visit his parents, he has to walk to his parents. Our guide, Tian, sent him a couple kilometers away to check on this particular bull because we kind of lost track of him and maybe push him back towards us. It was probably two kilometers to the Springbok and sent him around. And when we were walking back to our vehicle, we would probably have to cover about 500 meters and some people have to cover about two kilometers. And almost about 50 yards in front of the vehicle, he caught up to us. How? He didn't run. He wasn't winded. He wasn't sweating. I mean, talk about embarrassing. I mean, I run every single day, and I couldn't, couldn't keep up with this man if my life depended on it. We all were sweating. We were out of breath. But St. Piwe didn't look like he walked like 10, 10 meters from us. Just a privilege to work with them. Their knowledge about the animals, the animals' behavior. Um, we say they're the skinners and they're the tractors, but they do actually all the work. For us as guides, we use a lot of their knowledge and our, our advantage. When we return, Tian sets up to succeed. At least, we hope, and well, hope springs eternal. Stay with us. Welcome back to Big Iron as we wrap up our South African Hunt for Plains game. After getting skunked on Impala and Springbok, we get with Tian, guide and taxidermist extraordinaire, and change strategy on our hunt for red lechware. With our lack of success on the stalking front, it wasn't for a lack of trying or necessarily, I think, a lack of skill. We worked pretty well as a team and we were pretty quiet, but it's, again, it's tough when you have this like long train of people trying to get behind a bush and some get caught out in the open. A technique change was necessary to hunt lechway. Now, I don't know how successful we would have been trying to set up an ambush with some of these other animals because it's so wide open, it's hard to do that. It's a tough thing to do with animals that are this weary and this alert. We had to at least try to stalk a few of them because that's what we do, we stalk. I never realized the challenge of handgun hunting. Uh, you had to get so close to the animals. So I set up an ambush for this lechway. So Tian set us up in this little stand of trees uh, next to a section of this particular land where this red lechway travels through on a regular basis. He's been spotted there a number of times. I knew a certain bull where he stays, where he's feeding each morning the footpath that he uses. I was sending a tracker around just to push him a little bit towards us. The plan was to get a good field of fire, sort it out beforehand, and hope that the animal comes through. It did. We were very fortunate that they took the right footpath straight towards us. He didn't quite take the, the path that I wanted him to. It was a little bit closer, but he ended up coming out farther away and I think it was about a 70 75 yard shot he stopped and he posed for a second which gave me enough time to send a 300 grain swift a-frame from my 454 into him a little farther back than I would have liked to but I'll take it I knew it was heat I knew he's gonna go down somewhere I think we walk about 50 yards on a blood path and we just find him lie down perfect shot Dave. Well done, sir. Thank you. Excellent shooting. Uh, really a very appreciate good it. Shot. Was a little bit farther than I hope, but you did a perfect shot on him. Wow. I like it when things actually go the way they're supposed to. You can see when it's a young bull, he probably fight another male. Right. No one got broken here. Look at that grew skew. Beautiful. Nice. Look at that thick nice. neck on him. It's just gorgeous. Nice, nice. Black legs. Oh, I'm bigger than I thought. Well done. Thank you. It's a privilege. A great shot on him. Thank you. Makes my work easy. And so it was a success. When I'm not hunting, I'm a full-time taxidermist here at African Pride Taxidermy. We are in-house taxidermy for tallest African safaris. 
We give these clients privilege before the other clients. We just give the clients a peace of mind. It's a one-stop safari. We use local African craftsmen to help me in the house. They grew up with them in their natural habitat. You can see their passion, their love in our work. Honestly, I was very surprised about the penetration on the handguns, about the hunting skills that were done over this past week. It was just absolutely fantastic getting so close to the animals and harvesting these animals. When we harvest some of the meat on our own property, I call it hunter's care. Some of that meat that we hunt, we donate that to an orphanage. In town, we've got a small orphanage where there are 17 kids that, that lost their mothers because of AIDS or something like that. And we take meat to that, to that orphanage, we feed the kids there, we look after those kids. That is very close to my heart, is that we in South Africa need to make a difference to other people. And that is so great that we get people from overseas and they are so open to this, that we will help the kids and we make a difference in those kids' lives. We set out to take more animals than we ended up with, but I have no regrets. This is undeniably the hard way to hunt such weary animals. The challenge for me at least is motivation to hunt in this manner, making each success a point of pride and accomplishment. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Remember, it's just like bow hunting, but louder. Drink to friends. Drink to friends. Cheers. 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 Cheers.